Today I'm doing a different kind of video than I usually do, one that I've wanted to do for a really long time. I'm going to compare automating the exact same thing in Zapier versus Make versus a lesser known tool that I love called Relay. I'm Sarah, formerly a marketer, now an independent technology advisor for tiny businesses. I explore tech, automate for my clients, teach AI, and give tours of some tools that can help you innovate in your business. I think most of you will probably have heard of Zapier before. It is like the industry standard when it comes to integrating tools, getting started with automation, making AI agents. So everybody knows about Zap. Less people know about some of its alternatives. And while there are more alternatives than just Make and Relay, these are the ones I like to teach to my small business clients because I find them the easiest for people to learn. Let's start by looking at the primary dashboards. These are the home base once you make an account on any of these tools. On Zapier, you've got the AI-powered prompt window that can help you get started with making your zaps. Or on our left side menu, we've got Discover. This is one thing that Zapier is really good at because it's such a big beast with thousands of integrations. Zapier is also amazing at its marketing content and the amount of templates and resources it has for getting people started. So Zapier usually wins in that way. You'll have your list of zaps here. Zapier can do a lot more than just automate and integrate. You can also do tables, basically host databases here, create your own apps, chatbots, plan out workflows with Canvas, create your own AI agents. These are part of the higher level paid plans in Zapier, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. I just want to focus on what this whole user experience looks like. In the next chapter of this video, I'll get into what it looks like to create a Zap automation versus automations and other tools. Let's compare to the main screen of Make. So the fact that it starts with organization and team, you can tell that Make is perhaps designed a little bit more for teams and not just individual small business owners. Scenarios is going to be your list of zaps, your list of automations. It's got an agent section. It's got a template section. Connections is your home for the integrations between tools or the tools that you have integrated into Make. Webhooks, again, we're not going to get this deep into automation because this is beginner level, but when beginner level automations don't work, you usually have to turn to webhooks and APIs. I don't recommend that unless you absolutely have to. We've got some functions here for devices and data stores, stuff like that. So from this view, you can tell Make is more complex, a little higher level than Zapier. Now we have Relay, newcomer to the market. Why I love Relay is honestly the pricing model. So I'm going to share with you the pricing of all these tools later in this video, but also the simplicity of Relay, how easy it is to teach my clients. We've got the new workflow button at the top. On my homepage, I've got the recent workflows versus the started ones, my favorite ones. I really like this like error screen. They've just added this in the last couple months. So if a automation run fails, you can go manually review each here. You can see I had some fail months ago that I just haven't bothered to resolve because I don't use that automation anymore. Recent runs, if your automations were really active, you can come here and see all the individual times the automations run. Now, Workflows on the left side is your list of automations. Runs are the individual runs of each automation. Apps is where you can see and connect all the app integrations that Relay has. Now, this is the one reason sometimes I don't use Relay. Because they're a newcomer on the market, they do have less integrations than some of the other major automation platforms. But I like Relay enough that I always check it first. And see if they have the automation I want. If they don't, I might turn to Zapier. If they do, I'm going to see what I can do in Relay. I follow the Relay product announcements very closely because as a growing business, they're adding new integrations all the time. Knowledge base is fairly new to Relay in the last couple months. Relay has gotten very into AI agents, and every AI agent needs a good knowledge base. This is where you could add the key documents and files about your business or 
whatever knowledge base your AI agent might need. I've got templates and other documented resources here. So let's compare what it's like to actually build automations in each of these tools. What we're going to do in each of these tools is a very simple automation where we want to add Google contacts from your Gmail. Pause and notice how when I added Google contacts into this as the trigger on this automation, there are three potential events or tasks that Zapier can do. This will vary tool to tool. Let's add capsule my CRM. But this is where you could choose any CRM. I do this automation often for people who use Calendly or other scheduling tools that you want those scheduling tools to add the contacts right into your client relationship management tool. Let's see what other tools they have here. 7,000 tools they are going to have most CRMs. So we got HubSpot. Folk is another one I've been using lately. Pike Drive, Brevo, Monday.com. Zapier is going to have the most. Okay, so we're adding a new contact into the CRM, and these are the actions that we have in my particular CRM. Quite a lot. Other CRMs might only just have a couple options for tasks here to choose from. Now, quickly, I want to show you the steps available to us in between, because sometimes you're trying to sync data from two apps, but you do need a filter in the middle or a format change in the middle or perhaps a human reviewing the data in the middle. I will say, see the premium warnings here. Zapier limits you to two-step automations in their free plan. So usually it actually stops me and I'm not able to add this in between. But perhaps that's change steps. All right. So I wanted to show you that really quickly. I will warn that sometimes in the configuring and testing in Zapier, I have had to do a lot of testing because something's not formatting quite right or there are errors. You do all the troubleshooting over here, typically. All right. Now let's try the same thing over here. This is what make looks like when you enter a scenario. And this is what I find gets a little bit advanced for my clients is all the functions available to us here. And again, the complexity of troubleshooting in make can be a little bit difficult for people who are new to automation to figure it out. So the same thing, what does it look like? When we connect to Google Contacts, look at all the possible triggers and tasks we have access to. So this is what it looks like when we continue automating after the first step. The flow controls would be some of those filters and conditions that you saw in Zapier. And let's go right over to Capsule CRM and all the actions available. We just want to add it. So this is, this is what I mean that makes things more complicated. See what I'm saying? It just seems like Make is overcomplicating this. Let's go to Relay and see what Relay can do. So we only have the three options here, but that's okay because contact created is the trigger that we want. What filters are available? Sure, sure, yep. So we don't have Capsule as a CRM, but let's see what else we have. We have Monday, Pipe Drive and Follow Up Boss, two CRMs. Let's see if we added two Pipe Drive. Okay. I don't want to connect to pipe drive right now, but I do want to show you some of the other steps available to us in the steps between what we want to happen in two apps. Do we need to control the flow of information? Do we need a human in the loop? This is what I've loved about Relay since day one. It was the first tool I knew of that actually had a human in the loop as the step. So I consider this really important for clients who need a human to do something like draft a contract, approve an invoice or a quote before an automation can actually send that out. You usually want a human to look at it. And you can see the human in the loop triggers here are either human has to hit approve and then the automation continues on. The human has to input a piece of data. Maybe it's for an invoice or quote, how much are we charging this client? One, two, three, four. Or they have to complete a task. This is where we can reformat data. All right, so now you've seen the inside of each of these tools. You get a sense of how user-friendly they are, how complex and overwhelming they are in other places. So we start with Zapier, where if you pay monthly, 
Like I recommend most people start monthly so that you get to know a tool before you decide if you're going to buy it for a whole year. This is where the difference between the free and pro plan is a big leap for tiny businesses or solopreneurs. I do get frustrated sometimes with the two-step Zap limitation of the free plan. There are also certain apps that Zapier will not allow you to automate in the free plan. I find this happens a lot with the accounting apps out there or some larger apps like DocuSign. Calendly is another one that at least the last time I checked, you had to upgrade to Pro to be able to automate these tools over on Make if you plan monthly. The pricing is a little more reasonable for small businesses and the free plan doesn't limit you too much. Now they're probably like Zapier. There might still be some apps that want you to upgrade to the next tier to be able to integrate these tools. I consider that sort of understandable for apps like our accounting softwares that these connections are sending sensitive information. We need to upgrade to keep that connection nice and secure. At least that's how I justify it in my head. Now over on Relay, when we pay monthly, it's a little bit more priced like Zapier. However, I have never run out of capabilities in Relay. I've been able to stay on the free plan. I think small, tiny businesses can realistically stay on the free plan for a really long time. That's all for today's comparison of these three major automation tools on the market. Once again, I'm Sarah, former marketer. Now I'm a tech advisor, builder, and teacher for tiny businesses. I love to compare tech and I've started doing it here on YouTube. So subscribe if you're exploring tech for your small business or side hustle.